It's called Outtakes on Bob Dylan. And it's just assembling stuff that I've written that never got into any of the books. Some of it was published in uh, fanzines and some was published in things like the Daily Telegraph and, you know, other obscure places Mm -hmm. uh, like that. Rock and roll was what I really grew up on as I hit my adolescence. When I got to university to read English, I met this girl called Linda, who astonished me by saying, uh, well, you know, there is someone on a whole other level from Elvis Presley. (gasps) What? (laughs) Because I was interested in Linda, I became interested in Bob Dylan. It was a great time to be a student. The 60s were absolutely exploding. May the 14th, 1966, yes. a Saturday night in Liverpool, your first Dylan concert. Yes, at the Odeon Cinema. And there's a sign outside the cinema saying, 2.45, The Sound of Music, 7pm, Bob Dylan. The electric half was difficult because it was ten times as loud as mm. anyone had ever heard anything. But the acoustic half was clear. He's so out of his head, and yet he's word perfect through these long, long songs. I've heard it said later, you know, by Liverpudlians that that nobody in Liverpool booed. Well, that's just a lie. There's a fellow up there looking for the saviour. The saviour's backstage, we have a picture. I graduated in 67. There were so many songs by then that were worth real scrutiny. And so I began to think I wanted to write about him at length, which would mean writing a book. I went to the Isle of Wight, which was an hour at the end of three days of sitting in the mud. Well, of course, I did go to the Earth Court concerts. I went to all of them Mm. and Blackbush. I went to the Paris shows as well. And they were just heavenly. Stayed at the same hotel as Bob, which was the Hotel Maurice. I think I got to meet him because... He was aware of my book but didn't want to admit it. Yes. And so he, he got the record, the London Record Company woman, to ring up one morning and say, um, Bob says, would you like to come backstage and say hello? And I said, yeah, I think I, could, I think I could manage that. Bob smoked two of my Marlboro cigarettes. And so, of course, I've kept the packet. <laughs> uh, serious critic of his work, you know. My wife and baby came to see the concerts at the Beacon in 89, and we were at the stage door one time because I was collecting, having to collect my tickets from Jeff Rosen at the stage door. And Tony Garnier came out to the stage door and said, ah, they even bring their babies for him to bless. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny when, when Song and Dance Man 3 came out, the last fortnight of the 20th century. There were all kinds of wonderful reviews saying how my first book had been, you know, made all these other books on rock music seem old-fashioned and this was a game-changer and so on. And I thought, God, I wish somebody had said that (laughs) at the time, back in 1973, you know. Outtakes on Bob Dylan. So it's your bootleg series. It is, my official bootleg series, yes. But I do want to include some new writing. There's also quite a lot of previously unpublished work, unpublished pieces of mine from 2006, 2010 and 2019, and also work that was published in unusual places for me, Sight and Sound, for example, the film magazine, and a huge piece from Canadian Folklore Canadienne, and new work, huge new essay on rough and rowdy ways. I've sit on my terrace Lost in the stars 